Okay, so now we want to see how a buffer actually does its job. We know that some combinations of assets and bases will create a buffer, but the question becomes how effective is the buffer? If we were to add an asset to our buffer, how big of a pH change would happen compared to if we were to add that strong asset directly to just water? So this section will discuss how the actual calculation. I'm going to first discuss conceptually what you need to do and then we'll work out the actual calculation with an example. If you have a strong asset or a strong base added to a buffer, you have to think first about which component of the buffer will neutralize that added asset or base. If you're adding an asset, a strong asset, then it's the base in the buffer that will neutralize it. If you're adding a strong base to the buffer, then it's the asset that's already in the buffer that will neutralize the added strong base. So to calculate the pH, you're going to first calculate this neutralization reaction. You have to write the neutralization reaction and calculate how much weak acid and conjugate base is left after the neutralization, okay? So that's the first part of the calculation. Now, how do we write neutralization reaction? It depends, it depends on what's being added. As I said, if you were to add a strong acid to your buffer, it's the A minus that's going to react. And so the reaction between H plus and A minus is going to produce HA. This reaction has a large K because it's just the reverse of the HA dissociation reaction. So therefore the K of this reaction is 1 over KA, which means it's going to be much larger than 1. So this reaction goes to completion. So when we do our calculation, we have to assume completion for this neutralization reaction. The same thing that we're dealing with when we're adding a strong base. Strong base, which is OH minus, is going to react with the acid component of the buffer. The acid component of the buffer is HA. So OH minus and HA reacts to produce A minus and water. Looking at this reaction is the reverse of the weak base reaction with water, so therefore the K of this reaction that I've written must be 1 over Kb of A minus, which again means that it's uh, much larger than 1 K value, so the reaction again goes to completion. So again, this first step right here, which is we call the neutralization step, either one of the neutralization reactions is going to go to completion. Once you've finished the neutralization calculation, then the next step is just to calculate the pH using the henderson hasselbalch equation, which was the equation we derived earlier to figure out the pH of buffer. And as long as the mixture you have is still a buffer, meaning that it still has both the HA and A minus in it, you can use the henderson hasselbalch equation to make your calculation. So let's take a look at how we use the two-step process that I just discussed to calculate the change in pH that occurs when we add 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide to either a buffer solution or just water. So we're going to see the actual effect of that base that we add on the buffer and on water. We're going to use exactly the same volume of the two solutions. The buffer is 100 milliliters and so is the water. Let's take a look at the buffer first. So in the buffer calculation, again, we're going to need to do two steps. The first step is that neutralization reaction that I mentioned earlier. So you have to pick the right species to write the neutralization reaction and that depends on what you're adding. Here I'm adding a base, strong base, sodium hydroxide, so the species in the buffer that will neutralize it would be the acid. So I'm going to have to write a reaction between the strong base that I'm adding with the weak acid that's present in the buffer. And once you know how to write the reactants, you'll be able to find what the products are, which is just going to be the conjugate base and water. Remember that the K of this reaction is a large K. We had gone through sort of the logic of that earlier. So since this is a large K, then the reaction will go to completion. But before we can do the calculation, we have to calculate the number of mole of the species that are present. Why number of moles? We've been using concentration all throughout in our equilibrium calculation. The reason we need to look at number of moles now is because there's a change in volume. When I'm adding 10 milliliter of something to 100 milliliter of something else, the volume is going to change. It's going to become 110 milliliters at the end. So both the thing I'm adding and the thing that I already have 
their concentration is not going to remain the same because the volume is going to change. So that means there's a dilution calculation that we need to worry about for the concentration. But instead of using our concentration calculation in our ice table, we're going to first use number of moles to make our calculation and then later on convert them to concentration when we use K expression to solve the problem. So let's calculate the number of moles. We're going to start with number of moles of OH minus. That's just going to be the 10 milliliters multiplied by the 0.1 molar of the NaOH. And that's going to give us this quantity called one millimole. You're going to see that I use this unit millimoles a lot in this chapter. That's because that's just about the right quantity, the right size, the right magnitude of the unit that we need in both the buffer and titration calculation. It's so much easier to use the millimole instead of to write times 10 to the minus 3 mole. The number of moles of the acidic acid, the component of the buffer, is going to be 100 milliliter, which is how much buffer we have, times the 0.1 molar of the acidic acid that we have. So we have 10 millimole of the acidic acid. If we calculate the conjugate base number of mole, it's going to be the same number. Now you might say, why do I need to worry about the conjugate base? Isn't the reaction just between the hydroxide and the acid? But remember, the conjugate base is the product of that reaction. And if you already have conjugate base present origin, which you do since it's a buffer, then you're going to have to account for that. Okay, so now we're going to actually do our ice table. We did our calculation. We're going to do our ice table for the neutralization reaction, keeping in mind that this is a reaction that has a large K. So we're going to use number of moles instead of concentration now for our ice table. So we have 10 millimole, 10 millimole of those two species, one millimole of the strong base that's added. It's a large K reaction, so that means the reaction goes to completion, which means you're going to lose all of the limiting reactant. Limiting reactant is the strong base, so minus one, minus one. And I'm going to have plus one here on the product side. So at the end, I'm going to have nine millimoles of the weak acid remaining, 11 millimoles of the conjugate base present. We still have a weak acid. We still have a weak conjugate base, that means we still have a buffer. We can use anderson hasselbalch equation to calculate our pH. So we find pH equals pKa plus the log of A minus over HA. pKa is just a negative log of Ka of acidic acid. We found that number earlier, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, that's the Ka. So the pKa is just going to be 4.74, the whole thing there. And then the log of the base over the acid. The base is acetate, the acid is acidic acid. Now we can plug in the numbers, but this has to be in terms of concentration. So the base is 11 millimoles, but then divided by 110 milliliter. That's 100 milliliter from the buffer, 10 milliliters of the strong base that's added. That is the a minus, and then the HA, which is the denominator, is going to be 9 millimole. That's how much acid we have over the same total volume, 110 milliliter. You can see that the total volumes just cancel away here. So it's really just 11 over 9. The millimoles also cancel away. So in the end, we end up getting a pH of 4.83. This number should make sense to you because remember, what was the pH before we add the strong? We had calculated it in a prior video and the pH was 4.74. Now we've added some base to it, 10 milliliter of the strong base and the pH had gone up to 4.83. So there is a increase in pH as we expect when we add base to anything and the change in that pH is 4.83 minus 4.74 and that gives us a change of 0 0.09 pH unit, okay? That's in the buffer. Let's see now what happens if you were to take same exact amount of sodium hydroxide, 10 milliliter, and add it to just pure water. So if you're just adding strong base to water, what happens is effectively you're just diluting your strong base. You're basically just making it have a new lower concentration. So how should we calculate the pH? Well, it's a dilution calculation. M1V1 equals M2V2. So the M2, the new base concentration, is going to be the initial base concentration, which is 0.1 molar. That's how much sodium hydroxide or concentration originally is, times 10 milliliter, which is the original volume of the sodium hydroxide, divided by the new volume, which is 110. You end up getting this number, 0 0.0091 molar. Again, this is the concentration of the OH minus after dilution. So because this is a strong base, the pH is just going to be 14 minus pOH, which ends up being 11.96. Now keep in mind though, what's our starting pH? When we just have pure water, pH should be 7, right? Because it's a neutral solution. The pH had jumped from 7 to 11.96 by adding the same 
volume of sodium hydroxide as we add to the buffer. So the jump in pH unit is 4.96. Again, compare this to the 0 0.09 pH unit that we observe in the buffer. Now, hopefully you can really appreciate the strength of a buffer, how it really prevents pH from changing a whole lot and going back to our original reason why a buffer is needed just think about it if your blood is supposed to only have this narrow range of ph from 735 to 745 you need a buffer there if you don't have a buffer if all you have is just water your blood is going to have ph values that are jumping up and down like crazy because all the different things you eat some of them are acidic some of them basic and that's going to affect the ph of the blood dramatically